I think I need to start by voicing a really unpopular opinion. I love Twitter. <laughs> yes! So, I hadn't planned this, but the whole point of my talk now is to change your mind about Twitter. Specifically, this is great. But hello, yes, I'm Helena. My, my job title is I'm Head of Digital and Communities at Innocent. Now, that is just a really fancy way of saying I tweet for a living. Um, it is a genuine job. None of my friends believe that that is genuinely my job. It is. I've been doing it for four years now um, and feel really lucky that someone pays me to do that for a living. Now, some of you will know stuff about Innocent. Some of you will have absolutely no idea what Innocent does. So, to get us all up to the same page, uh, Innocent is a, is a fruit and veg company. We take fruit, we like, press it, and then we put it into a bottle. That's all we do. Um, it's as simple as that. It's really not rocket science, what we do at Innocent. We started back in 1999, um, and in 1999 there were smoothies, not many, there were juices, but there wasn't really a health, health and wellness industry, there wasn't a healthy drinks industry. Um, and so we only really made smoothies, and these days, because, well I don't know about you, but none of my friends will go drinking with me anymore because they're too busy doing CrossFit. That's what's happening to the, to the world. Health and wellness is really at the centre of people's universe, so now we don't just make juices and smoothies, we make coconut water, we make sparkling drinks, we make loads of different stuff to fit in people's lifestyles. And uh, we haven't been around for that long, we started selling smoothies in 1999, and last year we had our 18th birthday, which for us feels really old, because um, we've worked hard for the last 18 years, but in the context of a company, uh, we're really young as a, as a company compared to most big brands, but we've done some good stuff over the last 18 years. We've done some very bad stuff as well, but we've done some good stuff in the mix. Um, and yeah, we've come a long way. We started uh, back in 1999 with our founders selling smoothies off the back of a grassy van uh, in West London, and our aim was to sell 10 cases of smoothies a day. If we did that, the business would stay afloat. And now, in 2018, we are all over Europe. Uh, we're still pretty much selling smoothies off the back of a van, but in lots of different countries. Uh, and we are, so we're in Europe, we are thinking further afield than Europe as well. So. So world domination is, is really what we're, what we're after. Um, and I suppose that the reason that Innocent has been a successful company is, well, there's a number of reasons. The first one is we make really nice drinks that people want to buy. But making really nice drinks that people want to buy, that like there'd be no reason for me to be here to talk to you about how we do social if that's all we were about as a company. One of the big successful things for Innocent is how we talk to the people who buy our drinks. It's never just been us shouting at people, please buy smoothies, please buy smoothies. We do that sometimes. But we've always been interested in having a conversation with those people. And the way that we communicate with people has really resonated uh, with our drinkers over the years. And that is a big part of our success. And I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why. Um, so one of the big things is Innocent has always been a social brand. Um, way before Facebook, we were having conversations with and I'll, I'll give you a bit of a background on that. So, Innocent was started in 1999 by these three guys, Rich, Adam and John. They met at university um, and they knew immediately that they wanted to go into business together. They wanted to be successful, they wanted to have a company, one day they wanted to have a yacht. That was their ambition. The one problem they had was they had no business. They, they wanted the money, but they had no business at this point. So they had several ideas um, before they got to Innocent. One of their early ideas was this. It was called, I kid you not, the electric bath. Um, the idea would be that in the morning before you went to work, you would set a timer for what time you thought you'd get back in the evening. And then when you got home, by magic, a hot bath had been run for you, and you could just whip your clothes off and get straight into it. Which actually isn't, it's not the worst idea. Like I can, I can imagine someone is making an app of that right now as I speak. But electricity and water not the best mix. Uh, so they scrapped that pretty quickly and the electric bath never got off the ground. Then they had to go back to the drawing board. They still didn't have a business. Um, and they went on a skiing trip together because they were best friends, they're still best friends. And uh, they hit the app prey pretty hard uh, one night on a skiing trip. And they woke up the next morning and they were all really hung over. And they just wanted to get something good into their bodies. Uh, if you've ever had a hangover, you know you either want something very good or something very bad uh, to, to kill the hangover, and they just needed some goodness, and there was nothing available in the ski resort. They thought, yes, smoothies. That is what we need to do. And the important thing for me about this, I'm not going to tell you the whole of the story because it would be, it'd be boring, but the interesting thing about that is what happened next. 
they, on this skiing trip, they decided we're going to make smoothies. So what they did, what they did next was they bought 500 quid's worth of fruit. They blended it up in their kitchen. They had no idea what they were doing, really. They just kind of made it up as they went along. And they took it to a festival in West London. And what they did was they had a stall. And above their stall, it said, should we give up our day jobs to make these smoothies? And beneath, beneath the stall was a yes bin on one side and a no bin on the other side. So they gave up the smoothies for free. And all they asked from people is to vote. Yes, should we give up our day jobs? No, keep your day jobs. And as the story goes, the yes bin at the end of the weekend was completely full, apart from the cups of their three mums, who really didn't want them to give up their day jobs <laughs> to make those drinks. They've changed their minds now. But the important thing for that for me is, the Innocent brand was started not with a decision, not with a decision to make smoothies, but a question, should we make smoothies? It's a conversation that we asked people, and only when we got the answer did we start doing it. And so that two-way dialogue is a genuine thing at Innocent. It's not brand bullshit. It's actually true. Um, and the, from that moment on, we've had a two-way dialogue with the people who buy our stuff. And that's really our philosophy today. And so we started talking to people. Uh, this is an early example of our carton. Um, it's on the bottom of our carton. So basically, hardly anyone would see it. Maybe one in a hundred people would see it. Um, it's, to, on the face of it, pretty pointless, um, but for that one person out of a hundred that turned over the carton because they were so bored and they saw this, which is a brand talking to them like human beings in an interesting, funny way, that's really going to stick with those people. And the thing is, now, kind of, I was talking to people at the break, now like everything is talking to you like this, your bank is talking to you like this, I had a Virgin Train talk to me like this uh, this morning, it's really quite annoying, but in 1999, this way of talking to people like they were humans not like you were a corporate entity, was really unique and different. And so in many ways, this was our very first social media platform. It lived on a carton, and it lived there for about a year before we changed it. Um, but we always used any opportunity to talk to people. Anywhere that we could get some space, we wanted to get our tone of voice across. Uh, and this is a, this is a more recent uh, example of our, of our labels. This is the back of a label. It's a big panel. We could have talked about fruit, but to be honest, and I work in fruit, fruit's pretty boring. Um, what is more interesting is business speak bingo, because the people who buy our smoothies then might go and sit on a train or an underground where there's no Wi-Fi and they're bored, or they might be in a meeting, and this might resonate. It definitely resonates for me. Um, it's far more entertaining. And the great thing with this is, because we're not talking about fruit on our packaging, we never really have, when we talk about things on social media, it then gives us a license to talk about whatever we want within reason. Um, and so it's really dictated the types of stuff that we talk about on social media. And on our packaging, we've always asked people to get in touch with us. It's never just being, here's something funny, please enjoy it. It's also then, if you'd like to come and see us, please do. So we've always invited people to come to our office. The crazy thing is people do come to our office. Um, I gave a tour last week, I kid you not, to a couple who had taken the day off on a Wednesday and taken the train down from Leeds just to look at our office. Um, I don't know why they were mad, but they did that. They cared enough that they wanted to come and see our office. And if they didn't want to come down from Leeds, because uh, it's quite a lot of effort, uh, they could email us or they could call us on the phone uh, or write us a letter. And because we asked people to write to us, people did start writing to us. Um, they wrote to us loads. Uh, this is, um, this is uh, what we call our wall of love. Uh, it's the first thing that you see if you walk into Innocent's office in London. And it's got the best of the best of stuff that people have sent to us over the years. It's everything from handwritten letters. It's, uh, it's got a tapestry on the left here. There's a hot water bottle cover as well on the right. Um, and this is the relationship that we have with people. I'm not going to kid you and say that everyone that picks up a smoothie sends us a tapestry. Because we would <laughs> then we'd start making tapestries as our business. But for some people, this is how much they care. And it's because we've taken the time to talk to people over the years. And the great thing about talking to people is they've given us pretty much all of our good ideas. We've stolen from people when they've got in touch with us. For instance, they, started, they wrote to us and they asked us to start a blog. So Dan, a guy called Dan, who was Innocent's first ever employee, he's now our global head of global brand or something equally important. But at the time, he was just the founder's mate um, from university. And he wrote all of our original labels, which really made Innocent famous. And he did all of our customer service and he picked up the phone and he had to try and sell 10 crates of smoothies a day so that we could stay in business. 
And someone got in touch with him and said, I love your packaging. I wish you wrote more stuff. Can you write a blog? And so in 2006, because one person asked us to, we started a blog. The blog was basically Dan talking about stuff he saw on his way into work. There's one blog about an exceptionally large pigeon that he saw. It's about 500 words. You should really check it out. It didn't often talk about smoothies or juices, but sometimes it did. Sometimes it's like, we've made something new. Maybe you want to try it. But most of the time, extremely large pigeon. Um, but it gave us another space to talk to people. And importantly, uh, you probably can't read this, but the first line of this, it says, we need somewhere. We need somewhere to share our thoughts and to give other people a chance to comment on what we're doing. And that's really the philosophy of our social now. It's not just for us to talk about what we want to talk about. It's also so people can say, hey, that thing you do, we really like that. Or that thing you make, we hate it. Please stop making it. And it gave people a chance to vent and talk to us. So we were writing the blog for a while, and then somebody else got in touch with Dan and said, I love your blog. Could you write a newsletter? Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not making that up. Another one person got in touch and said, would you, would you write a newsletter? So we started writing a newsletter. Um, we started writing it to about 200 people. We now send it to 200,000 people every two weeks. Um, and sometimes we do talk about smoothies when someone, probably quite senior, comes and taps me on my desk and says, please, can you write about smoothies this week? Yes, we will talk about smoothies. But most of the time, we'll talk about Christmas, if it is Christmas, or things that are going on. So, for instance, this week, we're talking about the clocks change on the weekend. So we're talking about the meaning of time, I don't know. But, you know, it's we're talking about things that are going on in the world, and occasionally smoothies. Um, so then we had a newsletter, and we had a blog, and we had packaging. Um, and so when Facebook came along, it really felt like a natural thing for us to do. It's what we were already doing on our packaging, it's what we were doing on our blog, and our newsletter. So we thought, well, we should get a Facebook account, because that's a great place for us to tell people about us, and to hear their thoughts. Um, I would be lying to you if I said to you we were great at it straight away. Um, here's an example of an early Facebook post that we did. <laughs> I'm not going to take credit for that. That was not me. That was not me. Um, but yeah, we, we had some dodgy moments. We did. Uh, we all nearly got fired. I still nearly get fired probably about once a week for stuff that I do on social. And we just kind of messed around with it. We were given a password, we were allowed to set up the accounts, and we just played around. There was no strategy, there was no talk of ROI, we still do not talk about ROI, um, but we kind of fumbled our way around, and then now we're at a position where we're kind of getting better at it. The first time that we did an amazing tweet, we did a great tweet, because I love Twitter, um, was during the, um, during the horse meat scandal a few years ago, everyone remember that, there was horse meat and everything, uh, and we wrote this on uh, on Twitter, um, just to remind people that there is no horse in any of our smoothies. Um, and, and that was the first time we really realized that the great thing about social is not just that you can talk to people and share your random musings. If there's something going on in the world or in the media, we have an opportunity, if we have something to say about it, to comment on what's going on. And that was the first time we really did something topical that resonated with Okay, so that's a bit of background. Uh, so I'm going to teach you uh, some things that we've learned over the years from getting a lot of stuff wrong and some stuff right as well. So our philosophy both to social and to customer service, they're kind of the same thing in my head, is keep it personal. A lot of brands, a lot of people will stand up and give talks about authenticity and the importance of uh, trying to have a human voice. Uh, Innocent, our philosophy of talking to people is, I'm a human, you guys are all humans. This is how we communicate. It's like it's a very weird experience standing up with a microphone and talking to like hundreds of people. But generally, hopefully, the way that I'm talking to you now is if you talk to me at the end, I'll talk to you in roughly the same way. But hopefully, my hands won't be shaking quite as much. Um, and then when we talk to people on the phone, when we talk to people on Twitter, when we talk to people on email, it should always be as if one human is talking to another human because that is what's happening. Uh, we do work at a brand, but we also have other lives. We are not corporate robots. Uh, so that's that's what we should be communicating. Now, I'll give you an example of this. So if people get in touch with us, uh, let's say uh, they've opened their smoothie and it's busy. Uh, and so they get in touch with us to, to tell us that. If we have to send anything physical, like a voucher, you will always get a handwritten card from Innocent in the post. And you'll always get a handwritten envelope. And one day, a girl called Rio and a customer service team about eight years ago 
start doing doodles on the front of the envelope. Now, I'm not claiming that this is going to win the Turner Prize. It's not Picasso, but how often do you get handwritten card through the post now? Maybe from your mum, maybe, I don't know, maybe from your closest friends, but you pretty much never get one from a brand. Um, and I think for me, the fact that this happened and nobody asked Rio to start doing this, she just thought it would be a nice thing to do. That to me says a human has taken 30 extra seconds out of their day to write someone a handwritten card. We did that eight years ago and that's really set the bar for everything that we do when we talk to people. Um, so the, uh, the handwritten notes are getting more elaborate. Um, this is a woman called Christine. She really likes carrots. So we doodled a carrot on a, on a card. Uh, and we try and personalize them to everyone that gets in touch. Um, but the point is, is that everyone that gets in touch with us should get that level of care. Um, and the problem is, is that it's, when you're writing a handwritten card and you're great at art and drawing, it's not that difficult to show that you care because you're, you're writing with a pen. Now, when it comes to social, how do we, how do we get that feeling and translate it onto social? That's the challenge that we have because we talk to hundreds and hundreds of people every day on social. And the main way that we do that, as I was saying, is talk like humans. At all times, talk like humans. Now, I'm going to give you an example. It does reference our key competitor, which is just coincidence, so let's not focus on that. But um, Jake got in touch and he said, it's 2016, why don't we have cartons of peppermint orange juice just yet? Now, we got in touch and said, peppermint orange juice, are you mad? And then he got back and he said, no, it's gorgeous when you brush your teeth, then have orange. It's great. Um, <laughs> Jake is wrong. Jake is absolutely wrong. Um, so the point is, that the tweet that we sent Jake, I'm not going to tell you that's the greatest words ever written. It's someone saying, are you mad? Peppermint orange juice. But that's something that if your friend said to you, oh, I love brushing my teeth when you have orange juice, you're like, come on, what are you talking about? I mean, that's what a human would say to another human. Just as an example, this is Tropicana's uh, tweet, which I'll read out to you. Theirs was... <laughs> We can't accept unsolicited ideas from outside the company. However, we're always independently developing new flavors. That isn't bad mouthing them as a company. It's just the example of the words. One of those tweets is written by a human who works for a company, and one of them is written by the corporate machine. Um, and so never be the corporate machine. Always be the human. I know it's more difficult if you work in a more serious sector than crushed fruit, but that's, always, that's a good thing to have in mind. Now, another way of keeping it personal is to invest in conversations. So if you talk to someone, rarely do you say, if they say to you, how are you? Uh, and I say, I'm fine. I would normally then say, how are you? That's how a conversation works. But on Twitter with a brand, quite often you will get one reply and you'll never hear from that brand ever again. That is not something we do at Innocent. We invest in nonsense conversations just like the one I'm about to show you. So a guy called Pete got in touch and he said, I do love Innocent Smoothies Twitter account. Very refreshing, just like their smoothies. So we got in touch and said, nicely done, Pete. Fancy a job. <laughs> Pete got in touch and said, my girlfriend is on to us. Uh, and this is a WhatsApp from his girlfriend saying, I feel like you're having a Twitter affair with Innocent Smoothies. We didn't leave it there. <laughs> Uh-oh, hold on. We can throw her off the scent. Give us a second. Thank you, consumer. Your business is important to us. Have a good day. <laughs> that ought to do it. Bingo, she's none the wiser. <laughs> Excellent, quick, to Paris. <laughs> then Gemma, the girlfriend, gets in touch. <laughs> she says, I'm watching you. We say, whistle, who us? Nothing to see here, just a business-like conversation between friends. Pete, you're right, she's definitely onto us. <laughs> what do we do? This boat is sinking fast, abandon ship. And then we ended it by going, now's not the time to share our notebook with you, is it? And we just <laughs> vandalized a notebook. Um, that took, that was maybe what, 10 tweets uh, and one destroyed notebook to make that conversation. We could have left it at one tweet, but by having 10 or 15, we've created something with that person that they won't forget. Like you'll often see stuff on social that will make you laugh and you think that's, that's funny. And then you forget it straight away. A conversation with a brand where you end up pretending that you're eloping to Paris <laughs> and then they graffiti a notebook in your honour. I don't think you're going to forget that in a while. And because the people who work at Innocent um, in my team are given the licence to do that, it's part of their day job, don't churn through responses. Spend the time having 10, 10 chats with one person is as good as 10 different tweets. And but sometimes the conversations we have start 
in a, in a funny place and, and get funnier. Sometimes people don't like what we do. A lot of what we do on social is customer service. Not everybody loves us. Uh, and so sometimes our job is to try to win people round. So this is an example of a tweet we might send if we were talking about smoothies. This is probably when my boss tells me to tweet about smoothies. So I send a tweet about smoothies. And Daniel got in touch and he said, if I didn't have to remortgage my house, I probably would. And sometimes people do say that our smoothies are too expensive. They are a premium drink. Uh, but worth every penny, everyone, so go and buy one. Um, but yeah, so people do say they're too expensive. So rather than leaving it there, um, we said to Dan, hello Dan, if you could secure a mortgage for four pounds, you'll be able to pick up two carts of smoothies from Sainsbury's right now. Um, and Dan gets back in touch and he said, you've made me look a right mug, fair play. We would never want someone to end, we'd never want someone to feel like that. Like even if we're having a joke, we don't want someone to feel like we've made fun of them. So we thought we would carry on talking to Daniel and see where the conversation took us. Um, so we said we like to see ourselves as mortgage brokers first, smoothie peddlers second. Dan gets back in touch. As long as it's the right job for you, then that's okay. Be proud of who you are. You're beautiful. The conversation was going quite well by this point. I realised that all of my conversations are like weirdly romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a takeaway for me from this conference. So um, yeah, I'll change my slides in future. Um, but then Dan, so we thought we didn't want to leave it there. So awkward hug. Uh, yeah, but not committal. <laughs> and so we said, sure, whatever. And that's how we left it. Now, Daniel started that conversation thinking that our drinks were too expensive and he was never going to buy them. That was three years ago. Uh, Daniel is now one, what we call our regulars, uh, someone that we have one round and now probably tweets us about once a week. Uh, if people will make fun of us, he jumps in and defends us. He is one of our biggest brand advocates off the back of this conversation. Doesn't happen for everyone. Sometimes people don't like us and they still don't like us at the end of the conversation. But maybe for one in ten people, it goes as well as that. So that's worth having those. Now, another reason to uh, invest in one-on-one -on -one conversations is that you prolong a great idea. So as I was saying, it's, you can make people laugh with a one-off thing on Facebook and Twitter. But by getting involved in conversations, you can make the joke go further. Now, this happened a couple of years ago. It was on International Women's Day. Um, I had a box of big for her pens uh, that someone had sent to me. Uh, if you haven't heard of Bic for Her pens, they're really, ladies, you want to listen to this, because they are revolutionary. Um, it's a pen designed especially for women. Um, it's, it's thinner for the lady hands, and, um, and it's pink. It's pink. Uh, these are genuine, they're genuine products, I own them. They're actually, annoyingly, really good pens. Um, <laughs> but still, um, uh, we did a post about it because it's ridiculous, so we've got three women to be proudly uh, writing with their lady pens and one gormless man that didn't know how to use the pen. Um, the post in and of itself was very successful, we could have left it there, but the great thing that happened was that women, and men, but women especially, loved this post. They wanted to get involved in the comments. Um, now Facebook uh, tell us frequently that nobody uses the comment section. Apparently 0.1% of people on Facebook use comments. Uh, this post had 10,000 comments on it. Uh, so we definitely cheated the algorithm uh, on that day. But yeah, so women got in touch and they started writing to us hilarious things about the pen. So I'll read this out to you because you probably can't see it. But so a woman called Christy says, Finally, a pen that enables me, a woman, to compile my shopping list and recipes. If only I could unshackle myself from the kitchen to order some. Alas, I'll sh I shall have to wait for my husband's return to ask if he could purchase them for me. Um, and so we then use that as an opportunity to carry on the joke and uh, say, excellent plan, Chrissy. While you're waiting, why not do some ironing? Um, <laughs> and then another woman, Faye, got in touch and she said, my partner picked up, uh, picked up my pen for her by mistake. He's now furiously ironing and baking an apple pie while fetching me a beer. You've turned him into a proper woman and I shall be seeking legal advice. I'm now essentially unemployed. And our response to that, sorry, it's a bit long, but I'll read it out to you quickly. This is understandably a very worrying time for you, Faye. Your male partner is spending his time hosting slumber parties and obsessively making daisy chains, while you're finding yourself watching old Top Gear episodes on repeat and earning 30% more money for doing exactly the same job. <laughs> but don't worry, there is a solution for all this. Find yourself the manliest pen and you can get your hands on. You're looking for a plain masculine design with absolutely no flowers or unicorns on it, with a very dark blue or black ink. Get your man friend to write, I am a man and I like man things, on a piece of white paper over and over again until he has an unquenchable desire to go outside and chop a lot of wood. Godspeed, Faye, let us know how it goes. And so by having comments with that, that got literally hundreds of likes 
uh, from, from people, and 10,000 of those, uh, we got notice for no money uh, in the national press. On that day, we got pretty much every um, news publication. And all of, the, all of the articles written had screen grabs of the comment section, not just from us, but from the people, from the really ridiculously funny women that we were talking to in the comment section. So comments can get you noticed, especially with the new algorithm. Comments are worth investing in because uh, more people will see your posts. Right, and the great thing as well about keeping it personal, the last thing on this section, is that people, as I was saying, give you great ideas. So January 20th or the third Monday of January is statistically the most depressing day of the year uh, because it's you haven't been paid for ages and payday is still quite a long way away um, and you're probably detoxing because it's January. So every year we write to it just to remind people that it isn't a real thing at all. It's just invented by someone in marketing. And a guy called Paul got in touch and he said, it's also Penguin Awareness Day, far more cheerful. And we thought that that was an amazing, that was an amazing thing. Uh, it's an incredible day to have because absolutely everyone is aware of penguins. There's no need to have this day at all. So of course we jumped on it um, and uh, we have an in-house creative team that are geniuses and within half an hour, uh, they made us this post to remind people that there are no penguins in any of our products. And there never will be. That's a, that's a, that's a solid commitment we've made as a company. Um, and then we spent the rest of the day just telling people what is a penguin and what isn't a penguin. Because <laughs> the thing is with it is that some things do look similar to penguins, but they actually aren't penguins. That's the thing you have to get into your head. Um, so on, on Twitter, people just were writing to us going, can you tell me, is this a penguin or isn't this a penguin? Um, so for this, and this isn't a penguin if you're wondering, it's actually a seat on the train. Um, Boss Burgers got in touch and said, is this a penguin? New Forest Dog, uh, Gilbert Rugby got involved, and the police as well. Um, so in case, in case you're wondering, I, I don't know if you, if you can tell from that far away, but the top is it's actually a cow, it's not a penguin, it's a cow. Um, that's, a, that's a dog, it's not a penguin, easy mistake to make though. Um, Gilbert Rugby, it's a shameless self-promotion, um, and um, uh, and for the police, of course, that is a penguin. They're always right, uh, and yeah, and you can look at this and you could say that is nonsense. What are you spending your life doing? Both of those comments are valid. They are really valid things, but nonsense works. Um, never underestimate the power of nonsense because it does this. Penguin Awareness Day on that day was a top trend on Twitter by a long way. It has been every single day. Loads of brands now genuinely get involved in Penguin Awareness Day like it's a real thing without irony. Um, it's created a, a little mini campaign. It's all because of one guy called Paul. I can't claim credit for that. He gave us that idea and we ran with it and it's really successful. Okay, second, make the hard sell interesting. I haven't really talked about smoothies that much. I do have to talk about smoothies every so often, otherwise I will get fired. Um, and we have to do that in Innocent, that's why we have jobs. Um, so when we make something new, so this is uh, Innocent Bubbles, it came out last year, it's, it's a sparkling fruit juice, 